a few scraps at what I think the roof pitch is, which I guessed a 612. And we like to use a little wider piece of wood than we're actually gonna use for the real piece because it exaggerates any mistake in the angle. Ooh, that's looking pretty good. I think you're on it. You think it's a 612? That's what I'm saying. I mean. Heads up. All right, coming down. I'm going to cut this new fascia board. The top cut we determined was a 612, and that means for every 12 inches of run, there's six inches of rise. And if you're wondering how I would mark that, I'm using a speed square, and it doesn't seem really intuitive, but it's actually pretty easy. This has a pivot point. If you turn the square on the pivot point, you'll see that it crosses these lines on this scale on the same side of the board. This is the common scale. Right here I'm using, the other one is a hip valley scale and that would be if you're cutting a hip or a valley rafter, which we're not. So I'm just using the pivot, aligning the six across the same edge of the board and then marking on this side of the speed square. And it'll give me a 612 top cut on this piece. Pretty about simple. That? You know, it's kind of funny in house building, we don't use degrees as much as you might think. Not too much. It's, it's in like <laughs> relative pitch. Yeah, and now you could determine the degrees by just seeing where the 612 if you look out here on degrees where it runs across is like yeah 26 and a half degrees which is right a very random number yeah it makes more sense in uh, a ratio of rise to run yes yeah. yes absolutely we got our first piece of zip panel coming up and we're using the wall panels on the roof and the reason we can do that is because it's sitting on a solid oh hang on it's sitting on solid decking instead of just on rafters. Otherwise, we'd have to use the red. Just wanted to clarify that in case anyone saw us do this and thought it was a great idea on their build. It's not unless you're putting it on solid decking. Is, is everybody good? I'm good where I am. I'm low for my line, but he's flush at the bottom there. Okay, we'll call it good. You hit one and let me pull it up. You can come down, Jason. If I don't need to come down, you can come up. Okay, I'm hit one. <laughs> this sucks on a house that isn't square. He's on a 16th wall. Okay, shoot it. I'm trying not to shoot a bunch of nails through the exposed soffit, so Ray's giving me the rafter tail alignment there. Right there. Is there another one over here? Right there. Right there. Jono has upgraded the rafter alignment nailing system here with a giant piece of scrap material. That's working great. We're just taping and rolling these panels as we go so that it's watertight everywhere we've got a panel. And we don't want to let these panels sit and get kind of sprinkled on and then try to stick the tape because it won't, won't stick quite as well, I don't think. So far, it's working. We need to extend the top edge of the sheathing line out to this corner so that we can measure it and make this angled cut here. Pretty good trick that we do is just use a chalk line and just run it across the top of the previous sheet like that. I'll just eyeball it till it's just touching as he holds it on the far end. And right about there looks good. We'll snap a line. Can you hit it? Perfect. So we looked out and this comes in exactly at the intersection and we need to stop right there because I think what we need to do is lop off this weird kind of gable end thing that's going on and make this a hip. Jamie's gonna take this big stick straight edge here and make some marks across the top edge okay. of our bit of roof that sticks up, our Sweep gable it. end. There we go, we're gonna change the design a little bit here to make it a little yeah that's kind of a bad design a little easier to shingle i don't know if you got a picture of that did you see it before we took shingles off i don't know but it was it, pretty goofy yeah it had like shingles just like water falling it was yeah. <laughs> over the end and they just got bend. creative for sure here slide that under the air hose there okay, okay. the side that's pretty much it yep. now we also have to lower it below this line by the thickness of our sheathing and on the angle we just gotta, I think, just guess with a saw. Okay, here, here's what I'm thinking. I can kind of sight it uh, if I get with the plane of the roof. Okay. I can sight the bottom of the sheathing. Okay. And I can I can begin to get a line. Okay. Well, and if we do that same distance off, 
top and bottom, I think we're going to be golden. Yep, I do too. Now this side I can't see, and I, I want to get a good accurate. Uh, it's just. A, oh, I see why you it's, can't it's, see. I, I can't see it, so I just I just need to get a little bit of that board out of there, just to see the bottom edge of it is all I want there, and then I can eyeball it. Something like yeah, that. Yeah, it's pretty wild how that half inch of vertical height comes out the double or triple on the horizontal on this surface. So if I just keep it parallel. I think that's what you need to do. You think that'll work? Yep, 100%. I'm gonna eyeball parallel. It's, it's roughly an inch. Okay. Um, right there. And then this guy right here. See if I uh, you probably need to go the other way go so you can way. see parallel. And that looks, what do you think? I think that's good. I can't really hold it too good here. I think something like that. Save the line. Just like carving your Thanksgiving turkey. done this correctly this will be completely in plane we'll do a little triangle of sheathing right there and we might need to do a little bit of framing Here we Jamie and Ben are laying out what appears to be a deck on the ground. Is that what you're doing? Yeah. I didn't even know about the deck. Man wants a deck. All right. I guess we gotta do it. Are we gonna build it or is he gonna build it? I don't know. I think we're gonna build it. I'm gonna dig it. He's gonna dig the footings. Okay, there you go. We're adding a deck. Frozen. Is it frozen? I, I love it here. Of course he was right there. <laughs> Dude, I don't miss the good stuff like the shot, homeowner bro. digging a hole with a crowbar. <laughs> well, I asked Jamie if he had a breaker bar. He yeah. sells shoes for a living, don't mind. Okay. <laughs> okay. I think shovel? you can keep getting. Yeah. Oh, gosh, did you hear that? <laughs> that shovel won't get in it. That That's one won't ground, get into folks. it. Wow. This is, this is wow. great. Good luck on that one. <laughs> Jason just gave up. I got a jackhammer at the house. Dude. That's what you need. You need the. I've got this little area framed back together and it's very crude. I didn't even cut angles on most of this stuff. I just needed a way to tie these together to something underneath, which is done. I shot nails through these, like into this little ridge piece here, and then added this little nailer here for the bottom part of this piece. And then I took a little bit off of that with the oscillating tool so that everything was in plain, flush, and supported and kind of tied together. And I think we can put sheathing on it and it'll be great. No one will ever see it again, thankfully. Got my piece here. Give it a shot. I think that's what I'm looking for. Good job, Ray. You're getting a raise, Ray. Um, now what? Oh gosh, these are these. All right, Ray, cross the bottom. Bottom right corner, starting here. Go over ten and a quarter. That should hold it. Today's video is brought to you by Factor Meals and they can help you meet your nutrition goals and your taste goals easier than ever. They deliver fresh, never frozen, dietitian approved meals right to your door. I've been eating Factor Meals for a long time now and what I really love about them is that they taste really good. They taste delicious, like a home cooked meal that someone that knew how to home cook meals made fresh. And I know they're dietitian approved and all that, but for me, it's just what I would choose to eat if I had to choose anything to eat. Not only that, most of them are ready in two minutes, which is faster than fast food, and they also cost less than takeout, and I think they taste better. 
They have lots of options, I think 35 different weekly options, and you can get as much or as little as you want. You can go anywhere from like six to 18 meals a week, depending on what you need. I don't know if you can tell from our videos or not, but I'm always on the go. I'm either working or doing a kid's sports thing or trying to go mountain biking or skiing or something all the time. And so factor meals for me have been a really nice way to cut down on the fast food intake because I don't really have much time to go cook or go grocery shopping. And my wife is super busy too. She works full time. So it's been a really nice way for us to get a good meal and not just eat junk because we don't have time for anything else. And Factor has something new, their wellness shots. I really like the apple, ginger, lemon, cayenne. It's got a nice kick at the end. That's my favorite. And if you use our code in the description, you can get two free with every order for life. Just head to factor75.com or click the link below in the video description and use code PERKINS50 to get 50% off your first Factor box and free wellness shots for life. There's two free wellness shots from the available flavors for every order while you're an active subscriber. Thank you, Factor Meals, for sponsoring our video. Thank you for helping me meet my nutrition goals. Let's get back to work. Good job, Jason. Thank you. That was a great idea. You get a raise, too. So for these pieces that are this really weird and cut up shape with a cut on every side, we decided just to cut an oversized piece, bring a saw up here. Look, you marked it on the face now, buddy. Right here. <laughs> Dude, that's perfect, right? That's the cut right there. All right, well, just take, take the line. He's got the idea. I Yo, think it, next time you I, tell me what to do. I think it'll be okay. So what we did was just cut these oversized and then I can lay it up here and make the marks really easily of, you know, where the cuts are gonna go. This one's just gonna, actually this one has very little. We'll just cut that there. Then I'll lay it up here again and make the final mark and it'll fit, right? Sure. All right, he's gonna try this one. I just gotta say that Jason's got the oldest blade there is on existence <laughs> of Earth on that. He is better with a saw than it seemed like right then. That's what I was afraid of there, Chifo. Well, All right, I so took you, the line, Chifo. So you're gonna take a little extra right there, and it's gonna be money. Mm -hmm. Shut the camera off, nobody, Bray! Nobody, nobody gets a raise now. <laughs> Dude, I'm piece. trying to fix your roof up here. <laughs> Man, he is like wrapping a Christmas present. I am pretty much. You sure you don't want your shed roof smaller <laughs> by a third? Jono's got all this torn apart and there was tons of rotten material, even some that ran under there. I'll get a shot of the inside of around that door in a second while well, I'll play it right now. Jono, we gotta get rid of that stud. Well, somebody was digging dirt with your saws off. So anyway, we're gonna be on hold for a minute if we wanna start at the bottom. So I think Jason and I are gonna start at the top with the sheathing and work our way down to the bottom so we can keep going. Yeah. Is that what you were thinking? I'm seriously, it's like we're like this, dude. We're like right here, like the <laughs> same kind of worrying me, actually. <laughs> You're like, I gotta get a different thought process. <laughs> I was gonna fix this, but now that I see it's toenailed so good, I think we can leave it. Okay. We are gonna double or triple this girder and maybe run it into here. But first we gotta fix the framing that's gone. Right, this stud is toast. And these studs are just gone. There was studs, see, um, they're going, going. Going, gone. going, gone. Now I, I gotta check actually to see if that, we got a three quarter inch gap if it actually needs to come back. That's looking. It's like they buried it. <laughs> it's looking like sawdust. I'm oh. thinking. Oh my God. I don't know. Oh. All right. Oh. Okay. Oh. Well, I hope we find something solid down here in a minute because. Oh. 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 Hey, that's pretty good. Okay. Oak. I want to say that the idea with this thing was right. Like, I don't want to hate on somebody that they didn't know that was like structural, that the drywall screws weren't structural because. It was the right idea. Like put an extra support that is the right size and shape. And they did that. It stayed, it stayed here. It's still there. <laughs> James having a hard time saying <laughs> something nice. No, it's, but, uh, 
It was the right idea, it just wasn't the right material or fasteners and stuff like that. That's a good way to put it. Ben has persevered. He drilled a bunch of holes in this thing with a impact or a jack hammer. What is that thing? It's a hilti. It's a rotary hammer. A hilti, man. Yep. And then he used the pickaxe and now he's he's in there. I think I just leveled up. Like if you're playing a game, you know you get to better levels. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I know I know what you're doing. All right, let's see if it works. We had a little bit of under sticking That's out you here. you wanted, right? You said to do that, right? Is that I not mean, what you wanted? It is. You just went to the next level of taking it, feathering <laughs> you it. You said to go to zero. Yeah, to like an inch out. I think it's fine. <laughs> it's solid G the under it. I just want it to not stick up right here. Go under that zip tape. There, I'll peel it. Let me peel it. Yep, you did it. Did I do too much? <laughs> no, it's fine. I just didn't want it to hit on that and yeah. get held up. So okay. as long as you're touching down there, yeah. like on the flat, yeah, you're goldie. Good job. Yeah. Jason's yeah. getting raised, Ray. Yeah, daddy -o! Yeah, Jamie's starting to go down the rabbit hole of yeah, trying she's to straighten moving up this house now a that lot. we've almost got it sheathed. And this was the worst spot as far as the roof whipping out here. And he's cut a bunch of these boards loose at the end so that it can move. And I just saw it move. I don't know where he went. I, was gonna, I don't even know what he's doing. I was going to show. But he was able to move this whole beam and everything in like an inch. The way he was able to inflict that much force on it was this chain that's run all the way through the house to where Arlo is. Arlo's here. Yeah. And, uh, and then it's looped around a board that's outside of that window. Yep, pretty strong board. And then what he's doing... All right. We're just kind of... And then you just step on the chain. Put a little bit of weight on it. All right, do that, Jamie. I'm going to show this end. It's okay. Yep. All right. All right. You ready? Yeah. All right. So you can see when Jamie's jumping him down on this chain, it's inflicting way more force than his weight somehow, and moving this thing where we want it. I guess okay. it's some sort of a mechanical advantage doing it like that. Yeah, or a carpenter advantage. Okay. Is it actually moving it here? <laughs> yeah, it's moving it a lot. Hey, Arlo. Cool. How are you? I'm good. Good. Well, good to good. see you. Pretty good, you know. How's the ear? It's it's there. Um, still there. <laughs> it's still there, packed full of garbage. All right. He's not supposed to lift more than 10 pounds, they said. It's crazy. Well, really? Because your ear? A yeah. skin graft. The, oh. the guy goes, it'll mess the skin. And I think I probably mess it up. I don't know. Really? Jan, well, Jan actually, she keeps looking at it, and they go, "There's not supposed to be a scab on it." Oh, we can't really tell if it's a scab or if that's the way it's supposed to look. So, are you gonna stand on that? Yep. How many foot pounds are you gonna put on? All right, it? no, we're not even doing this. I gotta ask him before I start hitting record what he's gonna say. All right, go ahead and hit it right there, uh, Ray, and we'll see. I, I need it to go back a little, actually. Go ahead and put three in there. Three on the tree. <laughs> okay. He's just on one. He is on one. So, yeah, he is putting those screws into a tree, but it's not a shifter. It's not a three on a tree. Uh, yeah. Is it straight? Yeah. This is terrible I mean, camera anything... work. I want you guys to guess which one of the crew used to be a waiter. <laughs> <laughs> this guy. <laughs> oh, right. oh, oh, no, 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 no. Oh, you're all that I can do without, without that on there, maybe. Oh, well, that's not impressive. We want all that stuff on there. Oh. Whoa. Whoa! Thank you! Wow. <laughs> you know, Ben, I've seen videos up north of mm -hmm. them doing this in the winter. And what they have to do is lay these heated water lines wow. and pump hot water, and it thaws the ground in like two or three inches at a time. It's like if they had that. to dig septic lines or something like that. Uh, and it takes like weeks because they thaw like three inches, dig that out, thaw like three inches, dig that out. It's insane. Wow. So if Look this good. fails, get out your hot water. <laughs> this is about the deepest I've ever seen the ground frozen here. Yeah. But it was we zero just, degrees a couple of, nights. Yeah, we just it was like the polar vortex. Polar vortex. Well, like, this is probably in the shade here. Yeah. What you got right here? Well, we have a rafter, I, I think. Was, so um, the rafter was cut with a bird's mouth that is too deep in my opinion. I think probably any carpenter's opinion. 
Um, but we're going to go with it because we're going to double every rafter, giving it double the strength it has now. In addition to that, we're going to put two more layers on the inside of this girder that will give it three more inches of bearing, which it doesn't need bearing for weight, but it needs bearing to get the bearing point back here to a thicker part of our board. I would agree with that. So a combination of all those things, I believe I will be okay with it. Yep. And now that John has blown off these rows here, we can hopefully fish it in and turn it up right. And <clears throat> we're going to give it a go right now. Ray, how are you looking there? Looks good for me. Um, okay. If you, I mean, I think it's beautiful. I'd say make a pattern out of that thing. You think so? I know yeah. what the numbers are. I got yeah. it. I got it. Okay. I kind of want to get one in. So now that that's in, we can buzz off the rotten tail that's sticking out there from the other one. Yeah. And then and that'll we look make... a lot nicer. We need to, well, we can either leave one tail per. I think we should probably or just, just leave. Or just duplicate the tail. Uh, saw, that all, saw it off and duplicate the tail. I don't know. That's up to you. I'm not really sure if I'm sold on either of those, like as a better option. Jamie's got the last of these doubled up rafters going in which is gonna be amazingly better as far as being on this roof. It was really scary before, so it felt like it might actually just cave in. Uh, there was a good chance of that. Yeah, so uh, we got a couple more pieces of zip board we're gonna button up so that when it rains, water doesn't run on the inside of the house here. But overall, I'm loving this project. I think we should only work on houses that are like flat all the way around the structure, one story and small. It's fantastic. It's been amazing. It's actually fun. Lots of parking. Lots of parking. Dude, the, the bakery. Close to Bojangles. I mean. Dreams. We got it made. <laughs> All right. Thanks for building with us. We will see you on the next one.